Hello and welcome. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to install the desktop version of Ubuntu Linux in Microsoft Virtual PC. I'm going to assume a couple of things. First of all, that you have and have installed Microsoft Virtual PC uh, version 2007 uh, for the uh, Windows platform. That's a free download uh, from Microsoft. Um, so download that and install it. Uh, the second thing you'll need is the right ISO file. Uh, the ISO file is, is how a Linux distribution is uh, released. Uh, what that is is a, a copy of the uh, CD, uh, in binary copy of the CD. Uh, in, in most cases, you're going to have to actually burn that to a CD. There's a special process for this, but it turns out that Microsoft Virtual PC can use those ISO files directly, so you're not going to need to burn a CD. You do need a particular CD, however. If you already have the desktop uh, um, a version of, of this, um, either an ISO file or uh, already burdened onto a CD, um, that one's not really going to work for you. Uh, there are some minor incompatibilities between Microsoft Virtual PC and um, most of the Linux distributions that make installing that live CD, uh, standard CD, very difficult. So you're going to need to download the alternate CD. Uh, you need to download the alternate CD, the ISO um, CD in the i386 version. Even if you have a Macintosh, a G4, or perhaps a, a MacBook or something or other like that, uh, because the uh, virtual PC emulates a PC, so you want the i386 version of the ISO. And I'll show you what that looks like, and you'll see the exact title in a minute, so there's no confusion. I'm going to be installing version 6.10. Uh, there is a newer version out at the time I'm recording this. It's version 7.04, uh, but there is a mouse bug in that with virtual PC that at the time I'm recording this has not yet been resolved. So uh, I'm going to suggest you stick with version 6.10 uh, until you uh, hear definitely that that uh, mouse bug has been resolved. So let's get started. The first thing you need to do is bring up virtual PC. Uh, and if you don't already have a virtual machine running, it'll start the wizard. Otherwise, you could just click um, uh, New there if you already had one or more running. Uh, I'm going to start the wizard. And I'm going to create a new virtual machine. It's also possible to um, uh, add an existing virtual machine if somebody happened to give you a file or something rather like that. But um, uh, we're going to create a new virtual machine. Uh, and we're going to call this... Ubuntu 610 desktop, you can call it whatever you like. This is just identifies it. This is not really critical. Uh, for operating system, you're going to run down here and you're going to select Other. I'm going to click Next. Uh, I'm going to adjust the RAM. Now, um, uh, it may default to 128 megabytes of RAM here. Uh, that might be enough to get it installed, but I think you're going to find to actually run Ubuntu desktop, you're going to need at least 256 megabytes in a virtual PC window. So I'm going to change that here to 256. Uh, if you could spare a little bit more, it uh, wouldn't hurt. It kind of depends on what you plan on doing with it once you get it installed. But let's start with 256. Uh, we're going to create a new virtual hard disk. Um, the alternative are, are there, there are places on, on the web that you can download um, um, pre-configured uh, virtual hard disk, but we're not going to do that. We're going to create a new virtual hard disk using the ISO file. Uh, I'm going to accept the default here for the name and location of the, um, of the setup on my, on my PC. If you have reason to change it, if you want to put it on an external, external hard drive or some other place, certainly go ahead and do that. Uh, now I'm going to click Finish. Um, that's going to set up the, the container here, but of course nothing's happening. We actually need to start that. Uh, and of course, there's nothing going on at this point either, so it's going to try to boot something, but there's nothing to boot. What we need to do is we need to click CD, and we need to capture the ISO image. And that's where we come down to this particular one that you need to grab. And the one that you need to grab and download is Ubuntu 6.10 alternate i386.iso. And the reason you need the alternate is because it has a text-based installation mode. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to install this using the text-based installation mode, and we're going to do a little bit of emergency surgery on it once it's done to make sure that uh, those incompatibilities I mentioned are taken care of, and you can actually run this in uh, virtual PC. Uh, so I'm going to select this uh, ISO. Uh, and then I uh, can verify that that's um, the ISO that's selected here. And then I'm going to reset. 
And when I reset, that's actually going to um, boot um, the installation software from the ISO image. Notice we didn't have to burn a CD. I'm going to do a couple of things before we start. The first thing is I'm going to hit F4. That allows me to set the VGA mode. And I'm going to set that to 800 by 600 by 16. And that's going to be important. If you don't set that here, um, there may be some places in the installation where the screen display uh, is not right. So go ahead and, and select that. Press Enter. Uh, and then the default is install in text mode. We're going to go ahead and do that. Press Enter. Uh, and from here on in, the installation is a standard Ubuntu installation. So I'll be pausing and starting the recording. Um, could take... Um, in virtual PC, which is not very fast, half an hour, maybe 45 minutes for the whole process. I'll let you know how we're going. It may take several minutes for it to get to this point. This is the first screen that you'll see, uh, but it does have to load a bunch of things into memory, so uh, uh, be patient and wait for this screen to come up. Uh, obviously, select your language. I'm going to select English, United States. Uh, you can choose otherwise. Uh, the next thing that will come up is the keyboard um, layout, and um, I always just go ahead and um, uh, say no, uh, arrow over to no on detecting um, the keyboard layout. It's not very smart. It's going to ask you a bunch of questions and make you punch keys and do all sorts of strange things. And my guess is if you're listening to me at this, you already know what kind of keyboard you have. Um, but if, if you have a foreign keyboard or reason to suspect it might not work, you can go ahead and do the process. I've toggled no. And that just means I'm going to select U.S. English as the origin of the keyboard. And I'm going to select U.S. English as the keyboard layout. And again, of course, if you have reason to select something else, you should do that. And I'm going to press Enter. And it's going to start doing some detection, loading some things. I'm going to pause the recording here until it comes to something else interesting. And we're back. It's at the point where it's doing the network detection. What it's going to do is try to... Um, uh, latch onto your internet connection uh, and come up with um, an IP address so it can connect to the internet. Uh, and depending on exactly how you're configured and what you're running, this may actually fail. So I'm going to show you a couple of things you can try to get it going. Now, as you can see, it says the uh, network auto configuration failed. Um, so we're going to press continue at this point because that's the only thing we can do. I uh, have a few choices. We can configure it manually, and if you happen to know that you need to give it a fixed IP address or, or something or other like that, and this is something you already know about, then certainly go ahead and, and do the manual configuration. Uh, first thing you ought to try is just, just retry it. Uh, sometimes networks are slow. If you hit retry, uh, it'll go out and, and see if it can acquire a lease. But if it doesn't work the second time, then what I would suggest you do is take a look at this little icon down here. This is your network connection icon. If you right-click that, uh, you can bring up network settings. Uh, and what you want to look at is the adapter. And if you drop down the list of adapters here, you may find, uh, as I find on this particular laptop, that there are a number of different um, uh, um, adapters, uh, network interface cards. Uh, and in particular, it's uh, auto-selected the internal wireless, which I happen to have turned off. And you might expect that that wouldn't work. Uh, the one that I actually have running now is this... Um, uh, external card. I'm going to select that. Now the other options here um, are if you know that you can't get a DHCP lease and there's not much else you can do, you can go with a shared networking option and it will come up with a um, it'll come up with a kind of a fake IP address and then use your um, uh, use the network card that you have that's connected uh, to go ahead and, and figure out a way to get you onto the internet. But I, I would first suggest trying uh, the actual adapter that you're using. And I'm going to click OK, and I'm going to retry this, and we'll see if we have better luck this time. It succeeded this time, and now it proceeds. Uh, the host name is the name of your uh, uh, name of your computer. Um, default is Ubuntu. You can uh, give it something else if you like. My host, and press Enter. Um, it'll do some disk detection. I'll pop back in a few minutes. <laughs> 